Greetings sky lovers and welcome to what was supposed to be one whole video about the MCP panel. However, as it turns out, as fast as I try to speak, I just cannot fit all the information in one video. It becomes way too long. So this is going to be part two of the MCP explanations and we're going to talk about the lateral modes as well as the vertical modes we use to control the airplane. By the way, if you missed the previous episode, it was about the auto throttle modes. So if you've missed that video, link will be provided in the description. But anyway, enjoy this video. Okay, those were the auto throttle modes. And now let's get into the autopilot modes. Probably the most simple mode to use is the heading mode. Now, when you engage the heading mode, just like with the speed window, you're going to have a heading window. And just like with the speed, you can choose the heading you want to fly your airplane with. Now, what is a heading? Now imagine your captain is here and his head is pointing straight ahead. You're also here and your head is pointing straight ahead. The nose of the airplane right in front of you is pointing straight ahead. So let's say you set 0, 0, 0 degrees. This means that the airplane's nose is going to point to the north. If for example you set 0, 9, 0 degrees, that means that the nose of the airplane is going to point to the east. And so on and so on. Now the heading mode we primarily use when we are under radar vectors from the ATC. Under radar vectors means that the ATC will tell you what heading they want you to fly with. And again you have to comply with their requests. Now when you are in a state of an emergency, the heading mode is a really nice mode to use. The reason for that is that while you're dealing with whatever potential issue that you might have in the cockpit, you could request radar vectors from ATC, they will give you a heading to fly with, and as long as you fly with the heading that they've assigned to you, you would know that the airplane is safe from obstacles or other potential hazardous uh, uh, obstructions on the ground, which means that you will reduce your workload and you will have more time to deal with whatever the situation it is. Of course, every situation is different and it might require a different mode, but it's a good idea to know that it's an option, it's available to you and you can use it. The next mode we're going to talk about is the LNAV mode. Now the LNAV mode stands for lateral navigation, which means that with LNAV you're controlling the lateral position of the airplane. Now how do we use the LNAV mode? Well, in order to use the LNAV mode you need waypoints. Now what is a waypoint? Well, a waypoint is what the name suggests. It's a point on the surface of the earth. And how is a point on the surface of the earth defined? With latitude and longitude coordinates. As a matter of fact, in the FMC you have other ways to create waypoints, but that's a subject for another video. So if you've set the waypoints in the FMC, if you have point A, B, C, D, and you engage the LNAV mode, the airplane would calculate and follow the shortest path between those two points. And that, by the way, is called a great circle. Now, the great circle is the shortest distance between two points on a sphere. So what is the difference between LNAV and heading? As a matter of fact, you can use the heading mode to fly between those two waypoints just like an LNAV mode. However, the big reason is that the heading mode will not consider the wind. Now the wind is very, very important. Now let's say you're flying from here to here. If there is no wind, your airplane would normally move this way. However, if there is wind, when the airplane is moving up and the wind is blowing from this side, it's actually going to try to blow the airplane off our required track. So in order to stay on your desired track, you need to point the nose of the airplane slightly into the wind. That way you've corrected for the wind, and by the way this is called wind correction angle, and your airplane gets to the point you want to go in the first place. So if you've engaged the heading mode, you have to think about what is the wind correction angle you have to apply to fly to your point. But if you've engaged the LNAV mode, the airplane would calculate and know the wind, and the airplane would automatically perform the corrections needed to fly to your point. So when you're in the cruise stage of the flight, 99% of the time you're going to use LNAV mode. The next mode we're going to talk about is the VNAV mode. We already talked about the lateral positioning of the airplane, now let's talk about the vertical positioning. Now the VNAV mode stands for vertical navigation. The VNAV is probably the most complicated mode in the Boeing 737. Why is it so complicated you say? Well, remember those waypoints that we had on our route. Let's say we've engaged the LNAV mode and we're managing them laterally. However, let's say that in those points the airplane has to climb. Close to the airports you have to realize that there's a lot of airplanes and a lot of traffic. 
because of course it's an airport and a lot of airplanes want to take off and land. So to manage that traffic and not to allow a complete chaos around the airports, the airports have created the so-called SID charts. SID stands for Standard Instrument Departure. And when we get our ATC clearance when we're still on the ground, the ATC will specify which chart we have to use for our departure. Now to help you illustrate how the VNAV works, let's look at runway 36 for Riga Airport departure chart. Now I have downloaded this chart from the official aeronautical information publication of Latvia, which is free to use and anybody can download it. Link will be provided in the description in case you want to check it out. <laughs> so I know that the map looks a little bit complicated, but I'm going to use it just to explain how the VNAV works, so we're not going to get into many details. Okay, so this symbol represents the waypoint. And here with the bold text is the name of the waypoint. So you have Romeo Alpha 500, Romeo Alpha 551, Romeo Alpha 552, and so on. Oh, and by the way, this is the runway. And with the black line, you can see what is the shortest distance between those points. Now let's take the first point, Romeo Alpha 500, for example. Below the name of the point, you can see the number 3000 with a line below it. Now, the idea of this number is to tell the pilot that the airplane has to be at an altitude of 3000 feet or above. Therefore, you have 3000 representing the 3000 feet. And because the line is below the 3000, that means that the airplane has to be 3000 or above with the representation of the line. The next point, for example, Romeo Alpha 551, you can see that the airplane has to be at 3,500 feet or above. So, if you have engaged the VNAV mode, that means that the airplane is going to pitch so that at Romeo Alpha 500, the airplane will be at 3,000 feet or above, and at Romeo Alpha 551, the airplane will be at 3,500 feet or above. So, if you have engaged VNAV, you will manage your vertical navigation, and furthermore, if you've engaged LNAV, you're also going to manage your lateral navigation. And as a matter of fact, almost all the time, the pilots are engaging LNAV and VNAV mode for the departure, so that we can have lateral as well as vertical navigation. Which means that using those modes, it is very easy for us, because provided that we've inserted and we've checked all those points and altitudes in the FMC, once the autopilot is engaged, it will follow exactly those waypoints at those prescribed altitudes. Now in the example we saw, we saw that we only have altitude constrictions, meaning that we have a maximum speed or a minimum speed with which we have to cross a certain waypoint. Now the VNAV mode can also be used in a descent, and just like with the departure charts, we have arrival charts, standard instrument arrival charts. And during descent, there are actually different types of VNAV, with VNAV path or VNAV speed descent. But we're not going to get into too many details, because I was only going to show you that we can use this button to engage the VNAV mode. And we will control the vertical profile of the airplane. We have two additional and very useful modes that we can use to manage the vertical path of the flight. Now, the first one is level change. When you're flying with an airplane, you have the so-called levels. So, for example, on an altitude of 10,000 feet, would be referred to as flight level 100. An altitude of 20,000 feet will be referred to as flight level 200. And so on and so on. Now let's give a very simple example. You're at flight level 100 and you want to climb to flight level 200. If you press level change mode, the airplane would want to climb from flight level 100 to flight level 200 in the fastest possible way. And provided that the auto throttle is also armed, once you press the level change button, which mode do you think is the most logical for the auto throttle? The N1 mode. And this is one of the situations where the N1 mode will engage automatically. The N1 would give us the maximum climb thrust. So you will have the maximum thrust from the engines and the nose of the airplane would point upwards so that it can reach flight level 200 with the maximum available thrust. So level change is a pretty simple and pretty useful mode. During the descent, by the way, if you're at flight level 200 and you want to descend to flight level 300, the airplane would point the nose down, the airplane would move the thrust levers to idle and then the airplane would descend from flight level 200 to flight level 100 with the thrust at idle. And if the auto throttle is engaged, the mode that will be shown is retard. <laughs> retard meaning that the thrust levers are in the retarded position, 
meaningfully backwards. There are many jokes that I could have done here, but I'm not going to. And uh, I hope you understand why. The next mode we're going to use is the vertical speed mode. Now the vertical speed mode is a really convenient mode to use when you have to make a small altitude changes. Let's say you're at fight level 200 and you want to go to fight level 220. If you use level change and the auto throttle is armed, you get the N1 thrust. That most probably means that you're going to have way too much vertical speed, which means that you don't need to use that much thrust. With the vertical speed knob and the vertical speed window, you can set the exact vertical speed that you want to use. Meaning that in the example I've given, a vertical speed of 2000 feet per minute should be sufficient. But you can choose 1500, 1000, it really depends what you want to do. But it gives you a precise way to choose your vertical speed. And also the ATC might request from you to fly with a vertical speed of 1000 feet per minute for example. So an easy way to make sure that you're climbing with 1000 feet per minute is to engage the vertical speed mode. Important note to make about the vertical speed mode is that because you are now in this mode, the airplane doesn't care for your indicated airspeed. Meaning that the airplane would point the nose in a certain attitude that you can maintain 2000 feet per minute. But if the airplane is really heavy, you might not have enough thrust to maintain that vertical speed and indicated airspeed at the same time. But because you're in vertical speed mode, your indicated airspeed might stop dropping. And in this case, we say that we don't have a speed protection. Whether as in comparison to the level change mode, using level change, the airplane would first try to stay with the indicated airspeed that you desired it to be with, and then the vertical speed will be as much as it can provide. Okay, the next mode we're going to talk about is the altitude hold mode. Now, altitude hold mode is another mode that we don't usually use on a regular basis. The reason for that is, if you are during a climb or a descent and you press altitude hold button, the airplane will do exactly what the button says. It will hold the altitude at which you are. Meaning that if you are in descent from flight level 200 to flight level 100 and you press the button at flight level, let's say 170, the airplane would level off, meaning it would stop the descent at flight level 170. So in reality, ATC could say something like stop descent now or a similar clearance like that. In normal operations, you usually know when to climb and when to descend. But in any case, if something goes wrong, you can always use altitude hold to stop the descent or the climb at the stage of the flight that you are in. If you like this video, you can give it a like. It really helps my channel grow. Uh, if you like aviation videos, you can also subscribe. But in any case, that was my time for today. So I'll see you in the next video. Bye.